is of power because we are kings and our words matter. All things are yours. Your heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. There is nothing impossible. No good thing is withheld from you. You don't have to stretch your hand to anybody. If you will believe the gospel and hold on to Jesus and really believe the gospel, that gospel will lift you from where you are to where you need to be. Amen. The gospel will do it, my friend. How lovely are the mountains are the feet of death that bring good news, good news, announcing peace, proclaim. Jesus didn't say the spirit of the Lord is upon me so that I may give Jersey cows. He didn't say the spirit of the Lord is upon me so I can distribute chicken. No. He said the spirit of the Lord is upon me so that I may preach the gospel to the poor. Preach the gospel to the poor. Now these fellows will never preach but do everything else. Give cows, give chicken, give anything but not preach. I am not working on any cows. I am working on the word of God. I'm trying to find out what is my inheritance. I teach people about inheritance because the whole world is yours. All things are yours. You're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. There is nothing impossible. No good thing is withheld from you. 
you don't have to stretch your hand to anybody if you will believe the gospel and hold on to Jesus and really believe the gospel that gospel will lift you from where you are to where you need to be the gospel will do it my friend i have confidence in the gospel the gospel is the power of god unto salvation it will save me from my debts it will save me from my lack it will save me and deliver me from my wants it will deliver me from my poverty it will deliver me from everything that i am going through it is the power of god unto salvation well, that's the reason is it because we don't preach this kind of gospel and we are busy doing everything else and these very same people are the ones that criticize me oh he's preaching about some inheritance some strange idea from somewhere i think the cow is a very strange idea from somewhere really if you ask me the chicken is a strange idea from somewhere who gave you that idea did you find it in matthew mark luke and john hello <laughs> but they say my idea is strange idea it's not a strange idea it's in the bible it is a bible idea it is the whole idea it's the whole of the new covenant it is what god has done for us through jesus christ now listen to chapter 4 verse 19 to preach the acceptable year of the lord to preach the acceptable year of the lord what is he talking about see in the among the jewish people there was a institution called the 50th year jubilee year they called it the jubilee year was a very special year because if you borrowed money and you couldn't repay it and you lost your house for example and this is your ancestral house and you lost it today if you lost it that's it some guy will just own it you can never get it back but god had such a wonderful test system i think we just should go to the bible for some of the systems you know for the countries of this world it will be a lot better God had a wonderful system so that if you didn't pay your money the fellow who lent you the money has a right to take your house but he can keep it only until the 50th year arrives so that the lender himself when he lends you the money he will calculate how many years left for the 50th year because even if he repossesses the house he can enjoy it only up to the 50th year because in the 50th year the word says every one shall return to his inheritance the word inheritance is used it's your granddaddy's property it's your family property you will return to your inheritance you'll never lose your inheritance you may lose it temporarily you may lose it for 25 years the maximum you can lose it is 50 years you cannot forever lose it it will come back to you even if you die your son can go get it for you it is your inheritance it will be given back to you the jubilee year was like that so the everybody waited for jubilee even the lenders calculated the lending based on the jubilee year so if you went to a borrower a lender and wanted 20 lakhs it say all right what year is this how many years more to jubilee next jubilee 20 years so accordingly only he will loan it to you if it's if more years are left he will loan you more if less years are left he will loan you less because if you didn't pay he can only enjoy very little of it 50th year he has to return no matter what he took from you he has to return to you how many of you think it's a wonderful idea god instituted that but the bible connects it to the gospel that's the more wonderful thing the bible connects it to the gospel he says the spirit of the lord is upon me to preach the gospel to the poor to heal the broken hearted to set the captive free and to preach uh, and to and to proclaim sight to the blind and to proclaim liberty to the oppressed and then he says and to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord the jubilee year of the lord what does he mean he means that jubilee that came every 50 years was only symbolic of what was going to come through me permanently when jesus came he says jubilee has come from now forever it is jubilee for the last 2000 years it has been our jubilee i say to you and it is time to return to our possessions hello 
Some people are saying, well, I have 25 years, I've been a Christian, nobody ever told me. Well, thank God you didn't spend another 25 years in the same place. You know. So many, <laughs> so many people are entitled to collect on their lost stuff. They're entitled to return to their inheritance. I tell you, whatever we lost through Adam and the fall, whatever we lost in that deal, every single thing we can collect back, that is the jubilee. That is what the jubilee symbolized in the Old Testament. And now Jesus says, I am preaching the acceptable year of the Lord. What is the acceptable year? It is no more just the 50th year from Jesus, ever since Jesus came. Forever now, it is the jubilee year. We are living in the jubilee. Hello. We are living perpetually in the jubilee. This year is the jubilee. The next year is the jubilee. Ten years from now is the jubilee. If Jesus tarries a hundred years from now, it's still the jubilee. It is time to claim our inheritance. If the devil has stolen from you, if you lost it, whatever you have lost it, claim it back. Don't let the devil take it away. It's yours. Claim it back. Claim back your prosperity. Claim back your abundance. Claim back everything that you lost. Hello. Are you there? <laughs> I read to you that because some people who don't believe in 18, they have to believe the 19, 19th verse. Because it says, I'm here to preach the jubilee year. In this jubilee year, you cannot fool around saying it's very spiritual and it is spiritual inheritance and all. No, 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 no. It is about inheritance in every area of your life. Return to your inheritance. Get it back. You read Leviticus chapter 25 and 26 and 27. You will read about the jubilee year. It's a very interesting thing. The jubilee year is, I'm sure everybody looked forward to the jubilee year. Jubilee year was a jubilant year, a year of great joy. How would people feel if they lost their house 40 years ago and now they got it back? No wonder they called it jubilee. They were jubilant, glad and happy, rejoicing. I'll tell you the church is missing all the joy, the gladness, the rejoicing and the praise and the, and the glory of worship is lost in the church because they don't know what jubilee is and they have never been taught about their inheritance. They have never been told how to reclaim what was lost. And they have never been told that this is the time to reclaim it. They are living in the jubilee and they, have to, they, they don't know anything about it. They have never reclaimed anything. They never got back anything. They never have the joy. Hello. One fellow said, we are going through this wilderness journey into the promised land. I said, what are you talking about? Talking about Canaan. Tamil we call it Canaan. <laughs> so we have a song. Paramakana nukul yeri sella. We sang. Paramakana nukul yeri sella. In Tamil, we used to sing. That means I'm going to go into that eternal Canaan. I'm a poor man. Just going into the eternal Canaan. Canaan is only in the eternity after you die. Not now. The Bible is not about that Canaan. It is about Canaan here. <laughs> Possessing the land of milk and honey. Living in the blessings of God in this place, in this earth. And fulfilling God's purposes for your life. Now since this kind of gospel is not preached. That is why kings are walking. Hello. <laughs> We're coming back to the point. That is why kings are walking. Slaves are riding in their horses. Because the kings are dumb. They don't know nothing. The kings are walking. Those who ought to live like a king are walking. Slaves are riding the horses. And people that are fools hold high places. And people that have everything are laid low in low places. That is why it is like that. What will change it? The knowledge of these things will change. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 24. Proverbs 24. Let me just take five minutes more. Proverbs 24, verse 5. A wise man is strong. A man of knowledge increaseth strength. Tell you, my friend, knowledge makes the difference. For a Christian, 
knowledge is the thing that really makes the difference there was a time i never knew anything about it but then when i came to know about it i felt like i was that much stronger you want to be stronger how do you get stronger spiritually what increases your strength spiritually now if you want to get physically strong you know how what to do you need to eat and you need to go exercise and do, do a gym thing you know routine or something like that you can increase your strength you know how to increase your physical strength how do you increase your inner strength how do you become strong in the lord how do you become strong so that you can tackle the problems of this world knowledge increases strength he that hath knowledge increases his strength that's what the bible says now this is the thing since knowledge increases strength and uh, knowledge is the thing that causes us to go forward and possess everything that god has given to us and since knowledge increases strength in the sense that it gives us confidence see knowledge brings confidence that this is mine i'm sure god has given this to me this is what i possess this is where i am this is what i am this is who i am this is what i can do that kind of a thing knowledge does to you see there's a family attending our church for the last three months i met them just uh, the other day very happy to meet them because they had a little boy i think he must be under 10 i think forgot to ask his age under 10 and they're planning to go to goa for a holiday so they're telling me about how they want to go to goa and they're talking about that in the family and the young kid said it seems oh goa everything is ours even goa is ours only now these people are talking about it as such a big thing going to goa and he said it's nothing it's all ours it all belongs to us it's nothing we can do it now look at that little kid <laughs> just wait until he grows up to be 20 years old he's just been hearing for the last 3 months <laughs> if he hears for another 20 years what he will be like i'll tell you he'll believe all things are possible everything is his that he is the heir of the world i tell you there is a new generation rising up like that Amen. the old generation better catch up otherwise these little guys are going to pass us by you know because they have no obstacles they just believe all things are ours you know not like the other guy was talking about you know when i said say all things are yours he's just trying to get his mouth to say it he can't say it you know he rolls it 10 times it does not come you know some bondage in the mouth so knowledge see what little knowledge does knowledge causes you to totally have a different outlook in life you know and builds confidence in inside of you so that is what the gospel does when you hear the right kind of gospel it will increase your confidence level and it will bring knowledge about who you are what you have and what you can do and all of those things so that you begin to walk in the fullness of god's blessing and possess all that god has for you that is why the devil is after your confidence trying to rob your confidence sunday evenings i'm talking about you know how the birds of the air are waiting to take away the seed that is sown in our hearts and all of that you know i told the people the birds are there in the church they're not out there do you know there are some birds here you will say how do i identify birds brother you wait till the church is over somebody will come and say well pastor sam spoke about that all things are yours but i really don't think that all things are ours that's a bird <laughs> so next time when that bird comes in you sit on the opposite side <laughs> and avoid that bird because that bird has been sent by the devil <laughs> to destroy your confidence to take away the seed of god's word that's a bird you know i don't join with birds there's plenty of birds in chennai preacher birds believer birds <laughs> so i see them once in a while and uh, i see them far away say oh yes praise the lord <laughs> i just keep running <laughs> because birds you got to get and keep going because the birds if you stop and talk for a few minutes they'll take away everything you got i know some preacher guys you know friends you know that they'll stand and talk to you for 2 minutes 
and you'll wonder whether the bible is true or not <laughs> just two minutes of their talk you know they'll destroy your confidence but i want my confidence my confidence is the thing that gives me the surety my confidence is the thing that gets me up in the morning and gets me going my confidence is the thing that keeps me going even during difficult times the confidence that everything is all right that god is with me that i will have what i need that god will never let me down that confidence is so important that confidence came to me from the word of god and i don't want to talk to nobody that will take away my confidence i want to spend my time in the company of people that talk the confidence into me yes. i found that very early so i couldn't find preachers and believers that will talk like that so i talk got tapes and books and everything shut my room and spent time with them you want confidence spend time with paul peter john james a lot of good friends here hello just because you have fellowship it doesn't mean you're going to get better some fellowship is bird fellowship you lose whatever you got confidence the devil is in the business of taking away your confidence mainly through words watch what word is coming out because it will dispossess you of your inheritance you will lose out whatever you even have that's what it will do to you finally let me tell you the story hezekiah There was a king named Hezekiah. While he was ruling, the Assyrians came and surrounded him and the Assyrian king sent messengers to speak to the men working under Hezekiah. Send them a message, threatening message, saying, we have surrounded you. We have captured all the surrounding cities. None of those gods can save them. Who do you think is going to save you? We're going to get you next. as a kaya try to appease this king try to give him gold and silver and try to pay tribute to him and all of that but you know you can't pay off the devil you know he wants more and more and more until he leaves you empty you know so the guy won't go he surrounded and sent a message saying we're going to take you your god is not going to be able to help you look at all the other people those countries all of them lost out against us because we are a mighty army look at he's got he's got nearly 2 lakhs people surrounding this uh, judah the people you see and he says we are so big and we'll just walk all over you this is the message threatening message and when they heard it the men belonging to hezekiah tore their clothes and entered into a period of sadness and sorrow because they lost their confidence they came to the king and everybody tore their clothes as a sign that my god we are undone we are finished you know what is going to happen to us but hezekiah said send for isaiah the prophet and isaiah the prophet began to prophesy and he said that king will not even step into your city god says i will not allow that king even to step into your city not one arrow will come against you he will not he will not come inside and camp or do anything he will not enter your city i will cause him to I'll take a different direction and I will destroy him he'll be dead he's a dead man how do you get that done that's a big job he's got nearly 2 lakhs people big king threatening how is god going to do i have found out in the bible again and again big problems when they look big they are not really big they are really nothing to god they are not even small problems they are nothing god closes them very simply you know what god did he sent one angel one single angel who came and killed 185000 of the enemy's army just like that in a minute <laughs> hello one angel just imagine jesus said if i caught ask god he'll send legions of angels Le- one legion is thousands <laughs> whole earth can be destroyed one angel 185000 people dead as a, uh, that that a syrian king saw in the morning all these people his men dead and he ran away to his hometown and he was worshiping there in his place and his own sons came and killed him and his life was over finished chapter was closed in just few hours time that's it just one shot god finished the whole war everything is finished when they heard the prophet isaiah their confidence was built up i'm trying to tell you that you need to hear this kind of a thing and keep on hearing this kind of a thing because this is what will build your confidence when you build your confidence 
you will know just like god said to joshua as long as you shall live nobody will be able to stand against you you will realize that nobody will be able to stand nothing no power on earth will stop you from reaching your destiny in god and possessing what is yours <laughs> keep hearing it keep absorbing it keep building your confidence and keep possessing all that is out there that god has kept for you friend oh such a friend that he made my heart his own god himself is with me and i know i'm never alone no all my tomorrows will be better than all my hopes we got love grace peace and power and joy in the holy ghost we got love my god is never wrong yet he may stand for me we got grace about my chains and set the sin and free it's like a river and you'll never run it dry we got power over fear and death the past filled up with joy the holy spirit fills me up and i need him every day fire faith and confidence and knowing what to say i gave my heart and all my to the one who loves me most we got love grace peace and power and joy in the holy ghost we got love my god is never wrong yet. he may stand for me we got it who about my chains and set the sinner free it's like a river and you never run it dry we got power over fear and death and hearts filled up with joy Spirit fills me up and I need him every day. Fire, faith, and confidence in knowing what to say. I gave my heart and all I am to the one who loves me most. We got love, grace, peace, and power, and joy in the Holy Ghost. We got love, my God is never wrong. He may stand for me. We got love, it blew apart my chase and set the sin free. Like a river and to never run it dry. We got power over fear and death and hearts filled up with joy. Oh, we got love, my God is never wrong. Yet. He makes stuff for me. We got grace. It blew up on my chains and set the sin free. We got peace. It's like a river and to never run it dry. We got power over fear and death and hearts filled up with joy. friend oh such a friend that he made my heart his so god himself is with me and i know i'm never alone i know all my tomorrows will be better than all my hopes we got love grace peace and power and joy in the holy ghost we got love grace peace and power and joy in the holy ghost we got love grace peace and power and joy in the holy ghost 